In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad T60, and why I think it's one of the greatest Windows XP retro laptops that you can buy today. The T60 was released in January 2006, with this model being manufactured in March 2007. Now you may notice that it says IBM. Isn't this a Lenovo ThinkPad? To explain this, IBM sold its PC business to Lenovo back in 2005. Before this, all ThinkPads were branded as IBM, and of course, had the IBM logo. But when Lenovo bought IBM's PC business, they also acquired the rights to use the IBM logo for five years. And this is why the T60 has the IBM logo on it, despite it being a Lenovo ThinkPad. You could also get the T60 and other ThinkPads from this time period without the IBM branding. This was the very first Lenovo branded ThinkPad. Let's take a look at the specs of this model. For the CPU, the T60 takes mobile Intel Core Duo processors, supporting up to a 64-bit Core 2 Duo T7600. However, the T7200 and T7400 CPUs are a much better price to performance ratio over the T7600. This T60 has the T7600 CPU, upgraded from the original 32-bit Core Duo T2400. For RAM, a maximum of 3GB of PC2-5300 RAM is supported. While 4GB can be installed, only 3GB is actually usable due to a chipset limitation. For the display, there were two display sizes, a 14-inch model and a 15-inch model. Both of these models are 4x3 inch displays. Now there is also a 15 inch widescreen model, but to keep things simple, I'm only going to talk about 4x3 models. Now here's where things start to get a little complicated. Most T60s came with a standard 1024x768 XGA TN panel. Now this is okay for Windows XP and some other light tasks. But the T60 could be configured with an IPS 1400x1050 display, or a 1600x1200 IPS display. These displays have much better color and viewing angles over the standard TN panel, and also have much more workspace. While the 1600x1200 display is extremely expensive, a good 1400x1050 IPS panel for the T60 can be bought for $50. Luckily, my T60 does have the IPS 1400x1050 display. Now, let's look at ports and I.O. On the right side, we have our hard drive, which is SATA 1, meaning that it's much easier to install an SSD on this machine. I threw in a 120GB SSD, which is enough space to load Windows XP and some games. We also have Ultra Bay, which allows you to hot swap devices such as DVD drives, batteries, and much more. Then we have two USB ports and a lock slot. On the left side, we have VGA, modem, Ethernet, headphone and microphone jacks, another USB port, and a PC MCIA slot. Opening up the laptop, we can see many classic ThinkPad features, like the classic ThinkPad keyboard. There are also many other features, such as the track point, the touchpad, and the fingerprint reader. As you can see, we have a nice and big 15 inch display. There are also status indicators on the display bezel itself. So now that we've gone over the T60 and its many features, let's see how this laptop performs as both a retro Windows XP gaming laptop and as a daily driver running Windows 10. First, let's see how it performs as a daily driver. Using Windows 10, the operating system doesn't take long to boot. The SSD really does make a difference here. Boot times are a little bit longer due to my multi-boot setup, but it's still faster than a regular hard drive. The high DPI of the SXGA display really does make a difference here. There is much more workspace with the SXGA panel compared to the original 1024x768 panel. It makes things like multitasking and doing work much more enjoyable and easier. Web browsing works great, but it does take a little bit longer because we only have 3GB of RAM, but pretty much every site I tried to load worked perfectly on Google Chrome. The SXGA panel really does make a difference here as well. There is much more space on the screen when browsing. I don't have any footage of this, 
but the original panel was awful when I was trying to browse the web. In my opinion, the screen is the most important upgrade you can do on a T60, other than the CPU and RAM. Even if you can't afford the IPS panel, you should be able to find a working high resolution TN panel that will work in the T60, which will still make a very big difference. Watching YouTube in HD worked great. In my tests, I found that playing a 1080p video at 30 frames per second worked just fine. It buffers for a few seconds, but then it plays fine without too many frame drops. I did notice that playing a 1080p video at 60 frames per second or higher caused massive frame drops, but playing a 720p video at 60 frames per second worked just fine. Of course, the results will vary depending on whether you have the Intel graphics or the ATI graphics. Um, in my case, I had the ATI graphics. Uh, there are also websites like NVIDIAs, which are basically lightweight mirrors of YouTube that will allow older systems to watch YouTube without all the scripts and stuff like that. Um, I'll take a closer look at these mirror sites in the future. So now that we've proven that the T60 is a suitable laptop for some web browsing in YouTube, how well does it work as a Windows XP retro gaming laptop? Once again, the fast SSD in this machine makes boot times much faster. Windows XP has never looked better with a high resolution IPS display. I would recommend using Windows XP to play games on this machine, as XP and other older versions of Windows don't use a lot of resources compared to newer versions, and thus you'll get better results. Older PC titles, like Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, run perfectly fine on this machine without any issues at all, even at the native resolution. Now granted, Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 was released all the way back in 1999, but don't worry, as we'll be testing other PC games as well. Newer PC games like Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 and Flight Simulator 2004 run good as well, and are totally playable. In the case of Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, I could run the game at the native resolution with a somewhat okay frame rate. I did find that turning down the resolution a bit did help the frame rate. You could also crank down some more settings and keep it at the native resolution. Now here's one of the cons of upgrading to a high resolution display. Running games at 1024x768 works mostly fine, but they have to be scaled up to fit your screen, which makes them look sort of blurry. But running the games at a higher resolution causes massive frame drops unless you crank down the detail. Keep in mind, these laptops were never meant to be gaming machines, even when they were brand new. The increased resolution and color depth was just for productivity, not gaming. Minecraft was a prime example of this. I could get Minecraft running at a, an acceptable 30 frames per second, but I had to sacrifice a lot to get it to work. Running it at the native resolution was basically impossible, and even when I turned down the resolution, it still would have a frame drop here and there. Turning down a lot of the details did help, however, and the game got an acceptable frame rate. I also tried some programs that use 3D rendering via DirectX 9 and they work mostly okay. Also, here's a totally non-scientific test of the speakers. They aren't anything audiophile, but they are better than most modern laptop speakers. In conclusion, I think the T60 is most likely suited for PC games ranging from the late 1990s to the mid 2000s. Anything made in the late 2000s might run, but anything after that will most likely not run. So that is my review on the ThinkPad T60. Despite a few issues, it is still a very good machine for both web browsing, YouTube, and playing retro Windows XP games. Even 14 years later, it's still suitable as a basic daily driver. Thank <laughs> you.
So finally, as the um, last thing I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to quickly talk about the Frankenpad T601. So basically, after uh, Lenovo released the T60, uh, they released the T61. And this is basically, it was just a better version of the T60. It has faster processors, it has up to 8 gigabytes of RAM, it has SATA 2 speeds, it has better Wi-Fi cards, all that stuff. It has better graphics. But, and, but basically, the problem with it is that when Lenovo re released it, you could only get it in a 14-inch uh, 4x3 model compared to the T60, which is a 15-inch one. And even worse, uh, they completely disabled, well, they didn't disable it, they got rid of the um, option to have a IPS display. So basically, you're stuck with a TN panel in the um, 4x3 model of the T61. And, um, yeah, there was no 15-inch version, but what people found out and what you can do is that you can take a T61 motherboard and you can put it into a T60 and you can get the 15-inch um, display size with all the um, extra features of the T61 motherboard, like, you know, the faster SATA speeds, um, better processors, better graphics. But here's why I don't recommend doing it, because number one, most um, T61s that were produced, they were um, the widescreen 16x10 models. Uh, basically, if you look on eBay for T61s, they're all going to be... Um, they're all going to be widescreen. You're not really going to be able to find one that's 4x3. Uh, the T60, you can still find 4x3 models. They're still sort of common. Um, but yeah, but what makes this even worse is that basically the dedicated um, motherboards, they had a very big problem. But basically, NVIDIA, who made the graphics cards for the T61, um, they messed up and they produced a ton of um, graphics chips that eventually fail because they're I, I, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with them but eventually they will fail and the motherboard will die um, this isn't a problem if you get a motherboard that has um, that has Intel graphics it's only a problem if you have Nvidia graphics and eventually they did fix it I think uh, motherboards that were manufactured after like August 2008 do not have the uh, failure they have good um, Nvidia chips but yeah that's still a very big problem and I um, I didn't mention this but it has to be a 4x3 motherboard to be able to fit in a 4x3 T60 um, if you look for like T61 motherboards or T61s that are all going to be 16 by 10. It's very hard to find one that's 4 by 3. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess by then everybody had moved to like, you know, widescreen. Um, so yeah, this means that the working um, T61 motherboards that are the correct ones that will fit in a T60 and are not going to fail, they're very expensive. I found one that was like $200. So basically, it's a very expensive upgrade. You will get a very big performance boost out of it. I mean, SATA 2 speeds and faster Intel processors is probably going to make a big difference, but it's like very expensive. And unless you really love uh, ThinkPads and like retro 4x3 laptops, I wouldn't recommend doing it because it's not really a good value anymore. I mean, this PC, I would recommend it like if you have a very um, tight budget and you don't want to pay like $100 or $200. It kind of defeats the purpose if you have to buy a $200 motherboard to make it faster. But overall, I would say that the T60 is still usable, of course. Um, it is a little bit a little bit limiting because you have like 3 gigabytes of RAM, but the T61 does 8 gigabytes. Yeah, but you can still get by with this thing even if it doesn't have the um, T61 motherboard into it. So that's just all I wanted to mention. Um, somebody might have heard about the uh, Frankenpad T601 and the uh, modification that you can do to these. There's also some other modifications, like um, you can put in a LED backlit display. You can modify these because uh, these basically, the displays in here, they're all CCFL, which eventually they go bad and they like yellow out and then they go dim. And LED backlits, backlights, they, um, they use less power, they use uh, more, they don't use a lot of as much energy as a CCFL backlights, and they're also brighter, they're more efficient, and they don't die like CCFL backlights do. So that's pretty much it for my review on the T60. I just wanted to put this in as like a last minute thing. And uh, yeah.